one of the problems that um, I've assigned uh, as a semester project to my seminal students um, has been uh, to write a program in Excel and also to write one in MATLAB. Um, and that if I give you the coordinates of the three vertices of a triangle to compute for me the length of the three sides and the sides of the three angles of the triangle. So uh, I have a video posted on doing that in Excel. And uh, here I've got a written a MATLAB program that uh, that does that. And I wanted to go through it um, as uh, efficiently as possible. I uh, hope I... Uh, succeed. Okay, so I began in the program. Triangle given the vertex coordinates. How long are the sides and how big are the angles? So these are comments in MATLAB because they have the percent sign beginning the statement. Uh, now I set the three coordinates. I'll call them coordinates A, B, and C. And I've just arbitrarily chosen A to have X coordinate 1, Y coordinate 2. B has X coordinate 3, Y coordinate 1 and C is X equal to 2, Y equal 3. So these are the three vertices, A, B, and C. Then what I did was I uh, defined uh, two functions. The first function computes the length of the side uh, that uh, goes between two of the vertices, and I do that for all three sides. And then the other function computes the size to the angle between any two sides. So uh, here's what I have. Now this is another way of defining a function of MATLAB. I have already discussed uh, using the, uh, the, the function uh, script for setting up a, a, an M file that, that serves as a function. But you can actually set up a function right within the MATLAB M file without making an outside reference to another M file. And I do that here. I have a function I call sides. And I say sides is equal to. And I have the X coordinates of two of the vertices and the Y coordinates of two of the vertices are the arguments that go into the function sides. And then what sides does is it computes uh, the difference of the two X coordinates squared the difference of the two y-coordinates squared, adds them together, and then takes the square root. So that is using the Pythagorean theorem to compute the length of the side that, uh, that has x and y-coordinate, x1, y1, and the other, the other vertex has x2 and y2 as the coordinates. So here's a simple diagram. Here's a side right here connecting this vertex and this vertex. This vertex has a coordinate of x1, y1. If you can't tell, that's what this is supposed to be. And this vertex has coordinate x2, y2. So I find the length of this line and then the length of this line. Okay, the, the, the distance is the x distance and the y distance between the two vertices. x2 minus x1 is this length. And then y2 minus y1 is this length right in here, from here to here. Okay, so square those lengths, add them together, take the square root, and by Pythagoras that gives us the diagonal of the, uh, uh, of the line, or it gives us the length of the line connecting the two vertices. So this is the function that does that computation. It's called sides. And so the output of this should be the length of the line connecting the two vertices. So here's what I've done here. With this as the function, I now said, okay, let's let C be the length of the line connecting the vertices A and B. So I take um, A1 minus B1 squared, add to that A2 minus B2 squared, take the square root here, right here, take the square root, and then that gives me the length of the side C, which connects vertices A and B. Side B connects vertices A and C. So I call sides again, and I give it the x-coordinates for A and C, y-coordinates for A and C, and then have it compute its magic, and it gives me B. And then I find side A is the side 
connecting vertices B and C. So I call the function again with B1C1, B2C2. So now I have the lengths of the three sides, A, B, and C. Now, to find the angles between any two sides, I use the law of cosines. It works beautifully. Uh, and that, so with the law of cosines, if you remember, if I have the length of two sides in a triangle, here, now let me, let me just pull that up, if you like. Here, there we go. Okay, law of cosines is if I have two lines, here's a line, here's a line, just like that, and I have the lengths of these two lines, I'll call them A and B. Okay, law of cosine says I compute this cosine of this angle A. I can compute the cosine of angle A by saying cosine of A, cosine of A equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine A. So I use this, this is 2AB right here, in case you can't read it, 2AB cosine A. So, um, oh sorry, this isn't equal to cosine A, Don't, stupid me. This is not, this is A squared, sorry. Uh, a, uh, so this is uh, this side, C, this is C squared. Okay, so if this length here is C, this is C, I can compute C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine theta. It's effectively a version of the Pythagorean theorem when the, length, when the angle between A and B is not 90 degrees. If it is 90 degrees, this reduces to just the Pythagorean theorem because the cosine of 90 degrees is zero. So I take this whole equation here and I solve it for cosine A. Okay, so that becomes cosine A is equal to c squared minus a squared minus b squared all divided by negative 2ab. So solving this equation for cosine a, I get this expression. So this is how I solve for the cosines of the three angles depending on the length of the sides a, b, and c. So that's what I'm doing next here in the second part of the program. I use the law of cosines, and now I define the angle between two sides. Now what I have here now, if you look, I'm inputting uh, what I'm calling the side, the variables x1, x2, x3, to be a, b, and c. So depending on which angle, one of these is either a, b, or c, the other is a, b, or c, or the third one's a, b, or c. So I have this function that takes these three as the input values is 180 divided by pi. I take 180 over pi because, because MATLAB, when it computes the, the arc cosine, it gives me the angle in radians, and I want to convert the angle to degrees. So that's why I multiply by 180 over pi. Now, um, so I'm going to find the cosine of the angle between the two sides and then find the arc cosine of it. This is why I have the arc cosine function here. And then this is minus, see that negative sign, uh, minus x1 squared minus x2 squared plus x3 squared divided by 2 times x2, x3. That is exactly this formula right here that I just told you. So depending on which are sides A and which are, uh, which are sides X1, X2, and X3, I'm either computing the cosine of angle A, the cosine of angle B, or the cosine of angle C. So I call function angle, I call that three times. One to find angle A, angle B, and angle C. So at this point in the program, I will have com computed the length of the three sides and the size of the three angles. The last thing I do is do a scatter plot. Okay, and I do a scatter plot then that is going to um, connect, draw the lines connecting the two sides. So I have um, 
Here I'm saying uh, x is equal to a1, b1, c1, a1. Okay, what, what, what am I doing here? I have y is equal to a2, b2, c2, a2. Then I have x max, x min, y max, y min. Okay, so what I'm doing here is then for each value of a, uh, for a1, a2, and so on, I'm computing a value for x. I'm computing a value for y given these three values. Now, um, what I'm trying to do is determine which uh, coordinate has the uh, largest x-coordinate, which vertex has the largest x-coordinate and the largest y-coordinate. So notice that what I have here is uh, what I'm, and, and, and this is what this section does here. So notice what I have. I have the x-coordinates are a1, b1, c1, and then I repeat a1 again. Because when I draw my lines, I'm going to draw a line between between a coordinate, the a the a vertex and the b vertex, then draw a line between the b vertex and the c vertex, and then draw a line between the c and the a. So what I'm doing here then is I'm setting a vector I call the x vector, which has all the x coordinates in a row, uh, ending with the same coordinate that I begin with. I have all the y coordinates in a row ending with the same y coordinate that uh, I'm starting with. Remember, the the coordinates a1 and a2 are the x and y coordinates of vertex a. b1 and b2 are the x and y coordinates of b. c1, c2 are the x and y coordinates of c. So I'm defining the x vector and the y vector, which gives me the coordinates of the points that I want to connect with a straight line. Then down here, I'm finding uh, the minimum and maximum values of the of the x and y coordinates. What I'm doing that is so I can scale the plot. Okay, this is why I'm doing this right here. So now I'm um, going to uh, to set some things for the plot that I'm going to make. I set uh, the default axis font size to be font 18. Okay? Now then what I do is, uh, so that's going to set the font that shows up on the X and Y axis. Then I plot X and Y. So when I plot X and Y here, I'm taking uh, the coordinate the point with coordinate a1, a2, and drawing a line to the point with coordinate b1, b2, and then drawing a line with the coordinate c1, c2, and then drawing a line to the co point with the coordinate a1, uh, a2. So this draws three lines, one to here, one from here to here, and one from there to there, if you can see that. Okay, now what I'm doing right in here is uh, I'm scaling uh, the plot axis based on the maximum and minimum values that I have determined as x max, x min, y max, y min. So that's what this is. I'm taking the leftmost x coordinate in the plot will be x min minus 2. The rightmost y coordinate is x max plus 2. The bottommost y coordinate is y min y uh, minus 2. And the topmost y coordinate is y max plus 2. So this makes sure that when I draw the triangle, it doesn't go right to the limits of the graph. Okay, then, so I have, this is what x lim and y lim are doing here, scaling the plot axis. Now, these are uh, things that I actually print on the plot. So I'm, I'm setting up the variable txta, text a. And what I'm going to write out there is that a equals then num to string a. What this is doing is taking whatever the number is in a, it'll be a number, and converting it to a string, and then I'm going to actually print that string on the graph. I do the same thing with angle here. Say ang a, which is the angle, is num to string angle a. And then I say this is the angle in degrees, because if you remember, I converted it to degrees. 
I do the same thing for side B, angle B in degrees. Same thing for side C, angle C there. And then what these three statements do is they will then print out this text line at a coordinate, when, and I'm specifying the coordinate here, 0, 06, and prints out the text line. Here, specifying the coordinate, prints out the text line, and I determine these coordinates here just by trial and error. And then finally, I add some labels to the plot where I have text A, that's capital A, notice here I had text lowercase a, and what um, I'm then going to print out text A. How am I going to do that? I locate the coordinate x1, uh, y, or a1, a2, which are the x and y coordinates of the A. I then type out text A, which is left arrow. This is the symbol. It's actually a tech symbol. If you're familiar with the tech um, language for, for printing documents, this is left arrow vertex A. So I'm going to print a left arrow and then print the text vertex A. So, so tech, text A, and I use font size 18. I do the same thing for vertex B. Left arrow vertex B, then I print it, text. These are the coordinates. Uh, I'm printing text B here, and, and then I'm setting font size to be 18. Same thing for vertex C. Uh, so this is now printing items on the plot itself. So let's execute this um, and, um, and see how, uh, how we make this all work here. Okay, so I am going to execute uh, execute this whole uh, MATLAB script. And uh, it's going to print some things out because I didn't put uh, semicolons after everything. It'll print out values for A, B, and C, and so on. But notice it doesn't print out angles A, angle B, and angle C. So hit execute. It's printed out some things. But it's also given me this plot. So you see what I have here is I have this statement right in here, which is what was printed out um, right here. I'm trying to find it here. This was printed out right here. This statement right here is this printed out on the graph. The next one is this one right here. Notice I have B equals. So I have B equals, then the length of B, and then uppercase B equal to the angle of B in degrees. So you see, this is exactly what I got right here. So by comparing this to this, you should have some idea on how you can write text onto the plot. Then I have vertex A, vertex B, vertex C, and notice I have these left arrows at these points pointing approximately to the vertex. So here's the the plot of the triangle that I graphed using a scatter plot type of format. And um, that's what's done in this line, plot x, y. And then these are the text items that I print on the plot. And then these are the axes, which I also set to be font 18. So um, I hope with this, you can see how this, uh, how this particular MATLAB program works uh, to solve that triangle problem that is one of the problems you were given as a semester problem. Okay, until next time.